With diminishing supplies in fossil fuels and an increasing awareness of their damaging effect on the environment, attention is now being focused on more renewable energy systems. WaveBob, a small Irish company, is at the forefront of a newly emerging renewable energy system. We met with Elva Bannon and Kate Fitzgerald, two engineers who work with WaveBob, and they talked to us about what it's like to be an engineer within the renewable energy sector and why Ireland is best positioned to take advantage of this technology. Elva and Kate, you're both engineers here at WaveBob in Maynooth. Can you tell us about WaveBob? WaveBob, uh, the company, was formed in 1999 uh, by the inventor of the WaveBob device. The WaveBob device is uh, a wave energy converter, which means that it extracts energy from the waves in the sea and converts them into electricity. We're based here in Maynooth. We've got about 15 employees. Um, some people are working off-site in Donegal, Netherlands, um, over in England as well. Can you tell me a little bit about your backgrounds and how you actually ended up here in WaveBob? I had studied mechatronics in DCU. My degree and my master's were both focusing on mechanics, electronics, control systems and programming. So I wanted to do something that would bring all that together. During my master's then I focused on renewable energy type subjects and I did a thesis on wave energy and then that led me into WaveBob. My background originally uh, was aerospace engineering. I worked for Rolls-Royce on aircraft engines. Um, so I've always been involved in technology development and sort of complex systems. So how did WaveBob start? Where did the idea come from? I'm an inventor called William Dick, came up with the original principles, uh, built the original prototypes in his shed. Um, and in the last 10 years, the company's gone through various cycles of doing sort of very small scale testing where we would have been testing just the fundamental hydrodynamics in a canal or in swimming pools or in wave tanks and gradually growing up the design in terms of complexity and the purpose of the tests we do so that now we're doing tank tests that are, are testing the device for things like survival. So we're throwing storm waves at the device and seeing how it responds. Most people who design something for the ocean design it to stay as still as possible, but we're turning that on its head and we want something that's gonna be out there and move as much as possible. So WaveBob is part of a renewable energy industry. There must be a feel-good factor that comes with that. We all tend to have a bit of a passion for the outdoors and the environment as well. So it's great to be able to bring that into an engineering career so that you know that at the end of the day we're designing something that will change the world. Yeah, I think it's great that, like, I mean, climate change, oil depletion and all those kind of topics are like critical topics of our generation. So it's kind of nice to feel that even in a very small way you're sort of contributing towards solving that issue. So WaveBob is an Irish company. How important is that to Ireland? Like if you ask any surfer in the world, they'll tell you that the west coast of Ireland is an amazing place. And we're going to harness that and produce clean electricity for Ireland and hopefully be able to export that through Europe as well. It's great to have the companies developing the devices within Ireland using Irish skills that have come up through Irish universities. And the government are very supportive Organisations like Sustainable Energy Ireland and Enterprise Ireland are very supportive of, of small companies like ourselves. Elva, did you know from an early age that you were going to end up as an engineer? My dad was a, a carpenter and a, an, and a teacher, so I'd spend weekends and holidays working with him, building extensions or kitchens or always outside and working with my hands. And I loved to be able to stand back at the end of the day and see something that you've created yourself. And then my interest in maths and physics kind of then led me to engineering, knowing that I could use all these skills from an engineering degree and be able to work with my hands and build something. Engineering in general, is it something that's very specific to a personality type or can anybody get involved? I mean, engineering is a multidisciplinary subject. You know, it involves maths, physics, chemistry, materials. You've got to have a bit of business knowledge. So, a good engineering team will comprise of people who are good at all those different things and who have lots of different personality traits. Maths and physics, how essential are they if you want to study engineering? If you want to be an engineer, maths and physics are kind of an essential part of the engineer's toolkit. It's what we use day in, day out to figure out whether results make sense, to put together models, to design things. Um, but you don't need to be like a maths and physics genius. You need to know how to use it as a tool 
and work with it and use it to understand results. Well, maths and equations govern how the wave bob works and how it's going to react to different sea conditions. So we need to use those and build them into the computer models that we have so we can predict power and forces. And then we'll use those results to help design the machine. So can we go and meet the wave bob? Yeah, sure. This is actually part of our 17th scale model, which we tested in a wave tank out in France. Um, and this donut shape here is what we call the torus. And in a seagoing prototype, this would be following the wave. Um, and it would be attached to the, the tank that you see here behind okay, us. Yeah. What we see here in the middle is what we call a hydraulic power takeoff unit. And what that does is it converts the relative motion of the torus and the tank into hydraulic power and then this feeds an electrical generator which converts the, the mechanical power into electricity. This is what we call the float neck tank. This actually sits upright okay. and it's connected to the bottom of the column which goes down through the centre of the torus. Okay. The purpose of this is that it's a very heavy body that sits under the surface of the water and so when the wave passes it moves differently to the torus that you see here behind you. I'll bring you over to meet Scott now. Great. He's one of our mechanical design engineers. How are you doing? How are you? At the moment, he's working on a 3D model. Okay. Um, when we're de designing any of the devices, we always build it in 3D first before we get any parts made so we can see how it's going to move and how everything fits together. Okay. Testing the water, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> Engineering is considered as a relatively tough course at college. Would you agree with that? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's definitely, definitely not the easy option as far as degree courses go, but the, the plus side is that you're studying lots of different topics and also the ways you learn. It, there's lots of different teaching methods, so it's not just sitting in lectures for eight or ten hours a day. It's, you know, you do team-based projects, you do solo projects. Uh, you do labs, you do lectures, so it's, it's a much more interesting type of degree course. Elva, you're a mechatronics engineer, can you explain exactly what that is? Um, it is relatively new, it has kind of come from um, factories being automated, so robotics and automation would, I suppose, be the, the thinking behind coming up with mechatronics degrees. So you look at mechanics, electronics, pneumatics, there's a huge area of subjects that are actually covered, but robotics and automation is probably the, the easiest way to describe what you would actually be doing. So when you went to college, did you play with robots? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I built my own Lego robots for my final year project. And you're a systems engineer, Kate, can you explain what that is? Uh, a lot of the history came out from really man trying to go to the moon and NASA developing the space shuttle, which were phenomenally complicated projects, and the systems engineer could be described as like the, the sort of the glue that brings all the disciplines together. So it'd be looking at things like interfaces, what the customer requirements are, what sort of tests we need to do, how we certify the device. So it's all those kind of, it's a very broad range of tasks, but it's all designed to make sure that when you bolt it all together at the end, it actually works and does what it's supposed to. So what advice would you have for students who are considering studying engineering? I guess my main advice would be to get out and talk to people who are working in engineering in a variety of different companies, just get an appreciation for what they do and, and what skills you need to be involved in the subject. Get some work experience in an engineering company if you can. That's a fantastic way to understand what the job is. It's important to look at the subjects that you enjoy in school and what your passions and your hobbies are. And if you can bring all those together into a course and into a university that suits you, then that's what you should go, f go for. If you're not 100% sure of what you want, there's an awful lot of universities that have engineering programmes with a general engineering first or second year and then from there you can decide which area you want to go into. And also look at whether the degree courses are accredited by the engineering institutions such as Engineers Ireland because um, that gives you a good idea of the, the quality of the course. What's the best part of your job Elva? Getting up in the morning and coming to work knowing that I enjoy it. Knowing that we are doing something that's good, that there is a huge amount of potential there for Wave Energy and for Wave Bob. And knowing that my skills that I worked so hard to get over the years in college, that it, it's all been worth it. That's a brilliant answer. <laughs> <laughs>
enjoyed learning about wave technology and understand the work that the engineers at WaveBob do to harness the energy of the sea.